Hello everybody, it's Glass Half Dead here once again, and today I want to talk to you about a model that I don't think anybody has talked about yet when it comes to adding Indomitus models into Kill Team, which we know is coming up within the next, I think it's one to three months. It's the, as you no doubt know, Plasma Site. The Necron Canoptic Plasma Site. Now before we could talk about that, we very quickly need to mention the Scorpac Destroyers so that we have a frame of reference. I'm then also going to have a little word about why I think, for example, a Scorpac Destroyer or even a Reanimator that I have behind me here could work in Kill Team, but why, bizarrely, a much cheaper, much more manageable sized model doesn't work for Kill Team. But before we get into that, we have to talk about the Scorpec Destroyer so that we have a frame of reference for what exactly a plasma site does, why it doesn't work. Also, if you're a subscriber, I'd like to say a big double hello to you. And yes, that sound you just heard was your receipt. Stockpile those up, boys. We're prepping. I don't know why, but we are. If you want a double hello and that receipt in the next video, maybe even some sort of addition later in this very video itself, subscribe now leave a comment and a like, really helps me out, thank you very much. Let's look at the Scorpex Destroyer. I'm not going to talk about this too much because this isn't the point of the video, and I have talked about it before, but it's a 35 point model, it can do a lot of stuff, it's very fast for Necrons, two thumbs up, this totally fits in Kill Team, this is a great addition to the Necrons in fact, and I'm, I'm all for it joining Kill Team. The reason for that is that unlike, for example, with Space Marines, where the Blade Guard Veteran uh, kind of is just a better Terminator. Like, if you could take a Blade Guard Veteran, you're never going to bring a Terminator ever again. Essentially, the Blade Guard Veteran, for example, is just cheaper than a Terminator, so it's just a replacement. The Scorpec Destroyer, when you stack it up next to the other Necron model, the next most expensive model for Necrons is 25 points. This is 35. This is an option for Necrons, not a replacement. Good stuff. You could check out the abilities there if you want to see why they'd be really good. Uh, they have some abilities, they have decent stats, they're fast, good. Now let's talk about the Canoptec Plasma Site. The reason I want to talk about the Canoptec Plasma Site is because it's, it, it, it's, it's a very interesting design space and I want to kind of tell you why I don't think it works. Don't get me wrong, you should include this, there's no reason not to, right? But I don't think it would ever be taken. Let's just look at the basic stats first. So the Scorpec Destroyers come on a sprue of three Scorpec Destroyers and one Plasma Site. So you can't buy the Plasma Site on its own, comes on the sprue with the Destroyers, it is a model that is clearly supposed to be used with the Scorpec Destroyers. It's in the Indomitus box because the Scorpec Destroyers are in the Indomitus box. This is probably going to be a model in Kill Team. Great. Why is it a bad model? Let's just look at the basic stat line first. So the very first thing to note is it doesn't have a ranged weapon. It's got an 8 inch move which is nice but that's only to keep up with the Scorpec Destroyers. It does have T5. T5 is very good in general. But that's about it for the Canoptec Plasma Site. Uh, from a pure stat line perspective, it's not doing anything. One attack, hitting on a four, might as well not have an attack. Yes, it will have a minus one, but it's really not of any real relevance. That's, that wouldn't be why you are taking this model. Especially when it's 15 points, which means it is directly up against Necron Immortals, Death Marks, etc. Oh, and let's not forget, guys, we might be getting the new Deathmark stat line, which is way better than the current Deathmark stat line. And if it's going up against this at 15 points, we're never going to see this on the table. So, the reason you're taking this isn't for the stat line. It must then be for the special abilities. Now, let's quickly go over the special abilities, just so you know what they are, so that I can then go ahead and tell you why this doesn't work. Dimensional translocation is just a deep strike ability. We know what that does, no need to, uh, to discuss it. Although an interesting thing is that while the Canoptec Plasma Site has the Deep Strike ability, the Scorpec Destroyers don't. Evasion Protocol is interesting. Now, Evasion Protocol would give any of your Scorpec Destroyers uh, the ability to not be shot, essentially. Uh, as long, uh, 
unless they are the closest target. Now we already have this ability for the Death Guard as a tactic in Kill Team, which is Cloud of Flies? Yeah, it's Cloud of Flies, where you can only be shot if you're the closest model. This is fine. I suspect that when this comes over to Kill Team, it will remain as it is, purely because of Cloud of Flies. However, I actually think this would probably work better, like thematically, in Kill Team, um, as just gr always granting obscurity to them. But whatever. Who knows, right? Who knows? It can stay as it is. Infused Madness. Now, this is something that we'll never see play in Kill Team. I'm amazed this sees play in 40k. This is bizarre. So, it. On the roll of a one, one of your score pick destroyers is removed from the board. What? Okay, it, I mean, this is a 35.3 wound model that just gets removed from the board. Okay, it doesn't go to a flesh wound. Uh, well, obviously, it wouldn't in, in this interpretation of the rules. It doesn't take a mortal wound. If it was a mortal wound, that would be fine, actually. Uh, and then this would possibly see play, uh, almost definitely. But as it is... You could just remove it from the board. <laughs> Nobody's ever using this on the roll of a one. Um, because, uh, all, all you get in return is plus one strength and plus one attacks. Now, your native strength five with Scorpex Destroyer, uh, and if you take a particular blade, your strength seven. So you just wouldn't need this. You'd be taking your strength five weapons against pretty much everything because that gives you extra attacks, I think, base. Um, and that's enough to kill things in Kill Team when you have three attacks. You don't really need the extra strength or the extra attack. Not for this cost, at least. If they made it a tactic and it costs CP to give you an extra strength and attack, without having the negative of potentially removing a model, then maybe. Now, Recall Protocol, I suspect, could quite easily fit into Kill Team. It would just be exactly what it is there. If you're not within six of any other Necron model, you get removed. That seems fine. Uh, that's obviously a negative ability, but it's an ability nonetheless. And then we get Viral Construct, which isn't relevant to Kill Team, because this is purely about army building, list attachments, etc. Uh, but potentially, if that were to come to Kill Team, then it would say you can only take a Plasma Site if you also take a Scorpec Destroyer. That's basically what it's saying converted to Kill Team. So that is the Canoptic Plasma Site data sheet. Now, why do I think this model doesn't work in Kill Team? Obviously it does, right? You, I, it, I don't mean it literally cannot be played, like some people might argue for a Reanimator or the Outriders. This model does fit into Kill Team, but what I really want to talk about is the nature of buffing units and why any buffing unit cannot work when it comes to Kill Team and skirmish games in general. So the reason this sort of model works in big games like 40k is because you have enough points and models on the board to have multiple strategies working at the same time. In fact, buffing units are the core of 40k at the moment. Uh, as you may all be aware, th what is the most efficient, best unit at killing things? Uh, rerolls. Any model that can give rerolls is inherently a good unit. And that model will then be very expensive because you have to factor in the amount of points that it will be buffing, not just the points for the model itself. And that's fine. That's great. So you essentially have a stat line on a model that is underperforming, much like we do with the Canoptech Plasma site here. So the stat line underperforms for the points cost, but for every model that you buff, you are getting your points back by allowing that model to do more damage. That's the essence of a buffing unit. And when does that model become viable to take? That model becomes viable to take when you manage to buff and then allow those models that you are buffing to make good trades. A trade is when you put a certain number of points cost from your army into uh, towards a certain number of points cost of your enemy army. So let's say you take a 100 point unit of intercessors and you have one model that is 50 points buffing them. That's 150 points. And you can then put them, perhaps natively, that 100 points of intercessors wouldn't be able to kill 200 points of whatever orc boys. But if you then add the 50 point model that buffs the 100 points, so it's 150 points total, that buff from the 50 point model 
would give them enough power to then trade and destroy the 200 points of Orc Boys. Oh, that was such a complicated way of saying everything. That's how trading in 40k works. In Kill Team and Skirmish Games in general, but obviously specifically Kill Team, because of the incredibly reduced points costs, this Plasma site is never going to be able to get its points back. A list that maximizes a, a buffing unit's potential, in this case, uh, at 100 points would be one Canoptech Plasma site, two of these, and then one other model, um, a death mark, let's say. So that's four models with this one model able to buff two of them. That's not really good enough because in Kill Team you have the ability to remove one of these models really very easily. Two plasma shots, one melter shot, close combat, whatever, it's gone, okay? But in 40k that's fine. If you have one of these and a squad of these and these die, that's okay because you have the other 1,700 points in your army, you've only lost, you know, 10% of your army. In Kill Team, if you lose these two, that's 70% of your army. And as we know, this guy is then useless. So if this single buffing unit and, and the unit that it can affect go, you have lost 90% of your army, 85%. And that's pretty bad. The reason that buffing units in general don't work in Kill Team is because you don't have enough points to absorb the losses of that strategy going away. It's very similar to how elite teams work, in fact. Elite teams can work in 40k. Look, for example, at the current you know, tournament dominating list, which is Harlequins. They are an elite faction, just like they are in Kill Team. However, Harlequins don't really work in Kill Team, neither do Grey Knights. And the reason for that is because you could just get a few bad rolls. In 40k, if you get a few bad rolls, you lose 10% of your army. In Kill Team, if you get a few bad rolls, you lose 80% of your army. The maths just doesn't work. Now, I'm kind of going to cut it short there. This has just been a very interesting look uh, for me possibly not for you, at Canoptic Plasma Sites, and, and then I was looking at them, and then I thought, why wouldn't that work? And the answer, of course, is because buffing units in general don't work in Kill Team, and I was trying to figure out, okay, well, are there any buffing units that do work? And there are to a degree, but um, we're really looking then at, for example, Imperial Guard, where you your uh, leader has a natural aura. Um, and it's, it's not as restrictive as this. This guy has to be within three inches to buff things, but not the Canoptech Plasma Site, because whereas the Imperial Guard model can buff everything, uh, this can only buff a big thing. And I think that in 40k that's fine game design, not a problem. In Kill Team just doesn't work. Again, elite armies are very RNG and difficult to get consistent and good results with um, in Kill Team just because of percentage-wise. There you go. Anyway, this has been Glass Half Dead. I hope you've enjoyed my little ramble, my little think piece about the only model left in Indomitus that I haven't spoken about because I forgot that it, it existed in the, in the previous thing. I also haven't talked about Crypto Thralls, actually. My bad. But I, whatever. I mean, they're, they're an obvious choice because they are going to come over and they're valid. They, they can do things, you know. Um, yeah, cool. So anyway, that's, uh, that's me. What do you think about... Oh, actually, genuine question. Are there any buffing models in Kill Team that I've forgotten about? Like, are there buffing strategies that work? I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I don't know commanders that well. And... I don't know specialists after level 1 that well. It's possible that comms um, actually has a really good level 3 ability. I don't, I don't know. Um, I suppose comms itself is a buffing unit, right? And everybody takes comms. But again, that's the reason that works for me is because it's a single model that can buff and, and is its own model that can do things. This is just a buffing unit, to be clear. And I don't believe there are any buffing units that are viable in Kill Team. A model that is its own unit and you can give a speciality to, to make it 
buff other models isn't a buffing unit. It's a model that does stuff and it can do other stuff. Um, a buffing unit specifically, I don't think there's anything in Kill Team that does that, but as I said, commanders maybe, specialists after level one maybe, genuinely interested. Also, I suppose, I don't know, how could you make it work? I don't think you can make a, a solely buffing unit work in Kill Team because just from point granularity, unless you made this cost like one point and put a limit of one or two into the list so you could never take more than one or two, then it could work. Then it could work. But as it stands, then it's then you're then you're practically getting a free model. Anyway, whatever. I just thought it would be an interesting thing to talk about. Um, and this does kind of wrap up my my little pre-hype for Pariah Nexus, as I've now talked about all of the Indomitus models. Uh, next up, I've got a a chat about uh, the injury roll, how to fix fix that, um, where it's gone right, where it's gone wrong. And I've also got a terrain layout video coming up soon, so look forward to them. And hopefully, look forward to some actual Pariah Nexus real news. Ooh, I'm looking forward to a stat line, and more importantly, a points line. That's normally what happens in Kill Team. I think we're going to be super underwhelmed. Or, sorry, in Warhammer Community. I think we're all going to be super underwhelmed with um, everything we're told about Pariah Nexus. Because them telling us the stats, we already know the stats. They're not going to change. They're going to be these stats. What makes it good or bad is going to be the points costs. And they're not going to tell us they're going to make us buy the book to get the points costs. So... Yeah. Anyway, this has been Glass Half Dead. I hope you've had a good day. I hope you continue to have a good day. And if you are a subscriber, I'd like to give you a triple hello. You thought I was going to forget, but I didn't. Enjoy that sound receipt. Goodbye.